Hey guys, welcome to our channel. Today's video is going to be about my journey from my law school process since I just started applying to law school in January and I think it's been about two months now that my applications have been submitted and I think this is going to be like a mid-cycle recap but also a why I want to attend law school to give you guys some more information about who I am and what I plan on doing in the next couple months here. So, so for the first reason why I want to attend law school, I mainly with my parents being immigrants, um, they have given up a lot being here with me being a first generation American, Latino American, I think just having that kind of, I want to pursue bigger things than who I am. And with my accounting degree, I've always found it interesting. I love what I'm doing. I love the company I'm currently at, but I felt like I could achieve more with a law degree and my accounting degree. So I think those are the kind of like the main reason why I want to do it. Um, why the main reason why I want to attend law school is because of the ability for me to achieve more with both degrees. Um, another thing is I love helping people and I love just helping the Hispanic community and with the schools that offer clinics, um, helping immigration trials or helping individuals with lower income with trials. I think that's something very interesting to me and it sucks to see that public interest work currently is not a place where you could earn maybe a do livable wage for the amount of law school expenses but it's something that has always been involved in my life so that's the reason why I, I want to attend law school I think there's more and I think throughout this journey from now to the end of it you guys are definitely going to see a lot more of who I am and just see like why law school and I'm going to try to give you the best tips as I can but um, I think a little bit about myself and kind of the application is who I am so like I said I'm an accounting major I was an accounting major um, so I did okay I, I achieved a 3.0 in school so nothing great nothing amazing a B average but for law school definitely below average so it was a scary factor for applying because with law school comes elitism so the higher the school the better job opportunities you have thought like no matter what I can do I'm gonna attend law school and just whatever school I go to do my best at what I can and just show my undergrad is not complete image of who I am so no matter what I want to attend law school so I think my undergrad definitely GPA was definitely a weaker point and then my LSAT so I studied for about three months or so um, I took a class here in the DC area where they kind of teach you techniques and best All right, so yeah so then my LSAT grades was a one 59 so again a little bit below average but above the percentile when I took the test all the individuals I took the exam for that one specific test I was in the 75th percentile so honestly I'm very happy with it and I think it's a replication not of who I am as well but I think it's definitely a closer replication than my LSAT score or I mean my GPA score so Yes, but I took classes. I took a night class where after work I would go. And it was about three hours on Tuesday, Thursdays, and then every Saturday you would have a practice exam to take. And they would just kind of give you techniques on how to do this, how to do better. Like what is your, what are you struggling in your reading comprehension, your writing comprehension, your writing, your logic games, which is definitely a scarier thing. There's definitely a lot of, um, it's definitely one of the more challenging aspects people like to say kind of involves my application. Um, who I am, like I said, I guess technically on my application I'm a URM, so underrepresented minority. If you follow a Reddit on law school that you can see what a URM is and kind of all that information. And then I also had two years of work experience before I applied. So nothing too crazy where they would kind of unfactor in my GPA. People like to say if you've had maybe like five to five plus years your undergrad GPA won't be such a heavily big factor in but it could still play a role um, but yeah so I was two years out so I think my undergrad still mattered to a degree where my applicate my work experience could maybe just affect it a little bit with my recommendations and then also you had to get recommendations from teachers so I so depending on how many years you're out of school so if you're right out of college you need I think all your recommendations should be your professor, maybe one depending on if you had an internship or you just had a job. And then for me, I had two recommendations for my professors, one for my accounting and one from a marketing teacher who I absolutely love. I took all the marketing classes I could with them. And then uh, my senior manager who kind of overlooked with what I'm doing currently. So recommendations, and that kind of summed up the 
my whole application process of like what goes into your application. Um, and the biggest thing I think that is not a hard grade or GPA or an LSAT is your personal essay or any kind of essays involved with that. So with me being a first generation just law school applicant, just never, I don't, I never had anybody that in my family went to law school or who I knew personally that could help me with my applications. So I decided to seek a, I guess, a consultant, academic consultant um, to help me with my application just because I wanted to achieve the best I could and I felt like with my stats being set in stone, there's nothing I could do but my GPA and my LSAT unless I retook it. Um, I wanted to make sure that they saw my whole application, who I was and who was a person. So I hired a consultant, however, Reddit's free, free pages, free websites, Seven Sage. There's so many free work resources that you can use to help you form the best application you can. So yeah, so then I got everything together. I helped my dad help me hire the consultant who helped me form my personal essay and got everything ready. So then he and I were going back and forth. I think it was worth it. Um, it's definitely provided insight has allowed me to see because this whole law school application is a monster. There's a lot you need to do. There's a lot you need to submit and you need to stay organized to make sure you hit those deadlines. Um, Cause there's early, early applications, there's binding, there's regular decisions, there's FAFSA if you need aid. And there's just so much that you need to get involved or you need to have, and with somebody being new, a first generation law school student, I needed that help just personally to make sure that I got everything to what I need before the end of the cycle or getting close to the end of the cycle. So yeah, so then he and I started talking. Um, we figured out what my personal essay was gonna be. He and I just went back and forth with the personal essays and we just kind of just made sure that it was the best it could be. Um, but yeah, so then he and I came back, he and I back and forth, and then we kind of finalized it around December I kind of got everything ready and I started submitting my application. So I submitted to a lot of schools. Um, some of the schools gave a free waiver to me through email. Once you sign up to LSAC, you get a bunch of emails from different schools saying, hey, apply to me, apply to me. So I definitely kept those on the outlook or on the look when I received those. And if they said a free waiver, I paid the extra, I paid the money that you need to pay to LSAC, the Law School Admissions Council. It's 45 bucks to form the package and they send it to you, the school. So yeah, so anytime a school didn't have a waiver or have a fee attached to the application, I kind of like looked at it a little bit better to see if it was the right fit for me, and then I would apply. So I applied to 16 schools, some part-time, some full-time. The reason why it was part-time was just because we live in the DC area, and I don't want to rely on my parents for help, and I know they would help me no matter what, but I don't think it would be anything substantial where I could go full-time and still live in the DC area. So I applied to some part-time programs so I can make sure that my girlfriend and I, we <laughs> stay afloat. But yeah, so I have a whole list of like things. So I'm gonna read it off real quick. So I applied to Dayton Law School, American part-time, Catholic part-time, William Mary, Maryland, GW, Georgetown, Wake Forest, Ohio, Cincinnati, Richmond, Indiana, Penn Dickinson, Penn State. Um, story behind that, I think, one of them was a college at Penn Dickinson and then they moved to Penn State, something like that. You can look it up. And then Villanova and Temple. So as of right now, I've heard back for nine of them. So I'm still waiting on a couple. So Dayton, I was accepted, which was my first acceptance. I was super happy. Um, I was thrilled over the moon. I was just at work, I got the email and I just read it and I was like happy that I'm going to go to law school no matter what people think of Dayton or they shouldn't think of anything bad about a school no matter what. I think it just limits you in the region more than you can go nationwide depending if you go to a top 14 or even a top 30. So yeah, it's got accepted today in and then the next acceptance I got was Catholic University, Catholic part-time. So I was very happy with that because it kind of gave me another option where do I want to go full-time or do I want to go part-time? And then the best um, acceptance ranking wise that I've received is Maryland University, which I don't know if I'm leaning towards it out of those three because there's still many more on the list. But yeah, so that was the best full-time ranking. I think it's like a top 50 based off the 2020 U.S. News ranking. And then I've been rate waitlisted by Richmond, Villanova, and Temple. I pulled my waitlist. Oh. But yeah, I pulled my waitlist from Villanova. I just didn't think it was the right fit for me. Um, I applied. If I went in, maybe there were some schools higher on the list that I think if I got accepted to and I got accepted to Villanova, I think I would choose the other schools compared. So I just pulled my wait list, maybe give it to somebody else. You never know. Um, and then 
Richard and Temple, I'm still on the wait list for, and I'm still waiting to see um, where that is. And then I've been rejected, sadly, <laughs> by the GW part-time Georgetown and Willie Mary. Um, if you're unsure, this 2020 to 2021 cycle has been crazy with the pandemic hitting and the different type of LSAT format you received. Um, it, there's a lot more of applicants, different types of scores, higher scores than unusual. So it's definitely a strong, strong cycle that the schools get to choose from. I'm just happy I have three schools that decided to pick an acceptance over me, so yeah. But yeah, so I think right now, I'm definitely gonna do an end of the cycle, kind of at the end, where I kind of reveal what school I'm going to with Liz there. She definitely has some places where she would rather be than she doesn't, but we'll see where we end up. But I think my thoughts, if, for anybody that's looking to apply for the next cycle or just in the future, definitely put the time in for your LSAT. Um, don't be discouraged for what school you go to. At the end of the day, it's what you want to do and whatever school accepts you, just do the best you can. Because if you get to top one in your class, you're top one. Nobody can take that away from you. And I think that's something that individuals or just people need to get away from the law school where if you don't make it to top 14, you're not going to be lovable. Like maybe you might be a year or two behind somebody, but that doesn't mean you can't beat them. There's plenty of individuals who've gone to lower ranked schools compared to a top 14 and they're doing totally fine. But yeah, based off these remaining applications, I still have so many that I can choose from that I'm still just waiting to see um, what happens. And then from there, I'll just see what I want to attend. But yeah, I think my thoughts are, it was definitely a very, very scary process at the beginning, but with the consultant, my dad, my mom, and just having that supportive background, um, it's definitely something doable and don't get intimidated by it. I think anybody can do it. It's just a matter of, putting in the work ethic and then I think once we get to law school you guys will be there with the journey from day one till the day I graduate and you guys can see what I did what things I recommend to do better in certain classes abbreviations because there's a lot that goes into it um and then also I think the biggest thing that you need to have this whole law school application is a supportive background let it be one person or your whole family you just need to have that one person to keep it going because it's definitely going to be a little bit disheartening when you're looking at different stats when you're looking at different stats and you are just debating on like am i good enough am i this and that so you just need to have that one person to always push you up and for me that's liz and my family and i think right now we have a good good start at us with this application and then we'll see where the end of the cycle is and when school starts and how it goes but yeah so thank you guys for watching um please hit that follow button if you want to see the journey from law school which will begin in August or October, but yeah, so thank you guys for watching and have a nice day.